In this video, we're going to look at the nephron in some more detail. We're going to look at where the nephron fits into the kidney, the anatomy and the different parts of the nephron, and then look at the three processes occurring in the nephron, filtration, secretion, and reabsorption. Firstly, a brief overview of the kidney. So blood comes into the kidney through the renal artery and then splits into a whole heap of arterioles and capillaries. Those capillaries are in the cortex where they are wrapped around the nephron, the nephron being the functional unit of the kidney. Now the nephron spans the cortex on the outside and then it's got a part called the loop of Henle that dips down into the medulla which is very salty. The urine goes through that nephron and gets filtered out and collects in the renal pelvis and then drains away down the ureter to the bladder for excretion. The blood, which now has the urea taken out of it and other waste products taken out of it, then gets sent back to the body through the renal vein. So the functional unit of the kidney is called the nephron. This is what the nephron looks like. And as I said before, it stretches from the cortex up the top down into the salty medulla. Now, one of the important things about the nephron is that it's a tube, but it's constantly surrounded by capillaries. So it means that there's movement, and this is selective movement, from that tube of the nephron into and out of the blood. And that's where our reabsorption comes in in a second. We have where the blood comes through and the glomerulus. Now the glomerulus has uh, porous walls and small things get sent and collected into the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule feeds into the proximal convoluted tubule, which sounds like a big word, but really just means close, complicated tube. We then go into the descending loop of Henle, the ascending loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule, or the far convoluted tubule. And then into the collecting duct. And the collecting duct goes down to that renal pelvis of the kidney that I referred to earlier. There are three processes which happen in the nephron to maintain a constant state of the blood and get that urea out. So we have filtration, which occurs between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. We have secretion, which observes occurs between the blood and the two tubules, the both proximal and distal. And we have selective reabsorption, which occurs across pretty much the whole nephron. Before we look into these with a bit more detail, I just want to uh, recap on a couple of different methods of transport that occur in the mammalian kidney. So we have passive transport, such as diffusion and osmosis, which does not require the use of energy or ATP. We also have active transport which does require energy and the reason it requires energy is because we're trying to push molecules against the concentration gradient. We have reabsorption which is movement of substances from the nephron into the blood and secretion which is a movement of substances from the blood into the nephron. The main place that filtration occurs is between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. So the glomerulus is a system of blood vessels and it has holes in the walls of those blood vessels that works like a filter sorting things out by size. So the big things like blood cells and large proteins stay in the blood supply while small things like urea, salts, bicarbonate ions, amino acids, etc. they pass from the glomerulus through those holes and into the Bowman's capsule. That filtrate that is now in the proximal tubule is added to through the active secretion of drugs and poisons in that proximal convoluted tubule. So drugs such as aspirin and penicillin, they are actively using energy moved from the blood supply into that convoluted tubule uh, so that they can be excreted from the body. We also have movement in the proximal convoluted tubule in the other direction. We have active reabsorption of some salts, for example, sodium and bringing in with it chloride, as well as things like amino acids, small proteins and sugars back into the blood from the tubule. 
We also have passive reabsorption of bicarbonate ions and other salts like potassium, which maintain the salt levels in the body, or osmoregulation. Then moving down into the descending loop of Henle, water moves through osmosis from the tubule back into the bloodstream. And it does this because the medulla, as I said earlier, is very salty. The ascending loop of Henle, on the other hand, is not porous to water. Water can't pass across it. But what happens is salt is actively pumped from the ascending loop of Henle into the medulla. And that's what creates that salt-rich environment uh, that draws the water out in the descending loop of Henle. Once we get back into the distal convoluted tubule, there are more ions that are secreted and reabsorbed, both passively and actively. And the main thing that happens here is balancing pH in the blood. So we've got things like hydronium ions and hydronium, potassium and more bicarbonate ions, uh, which maintain that consistent pH. And then the, once we get to the collecting duct, there is a small amount of water that is again reabsorbed into the bloodstream and what's left over then collects in the renal pelvis as urine. So by the time we get through the nephron, we've gone from the blood to the filtrate in the Bowman's capsule and then to urine once it hits the collecting ducts. In this video, we have looked at the anatomy of the kidney. In particular, we've talked about the nephron of the kidney and how that nephron spans from the cortex in the outside of the kidney to the salty medulla on the inside of the kidney. We've looked at the anatomy or different parts of the nephron, uh, including the glomerulus, Bowman's capsules, proximal and distal tubules, ascending and descending lupus of Henle, and the collecting ducts. We've looked at the filtration, which sorts things out by size and occurs between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. We've looked at secretion, which is generally an active process, which causes molecules to move from the blood into the tubules. And we've looked at reabsorption, which is both passive and active, and causes molecules to move from the tubule back into the blood so that that filtrate that comes out of the Bowman's capsule uh, is not all lost and all the good things that need to be reabsorbed by the body are taken back into the blood before the urine is taken to the bladder.